So in order to make the physical connection between your MPU650 and the Raspberry Pi Pico W, it's pretty straightforward. You just need four jumper wires. I'm gonna link the ones I bought on Amazon that I used for this video. Uh, they're pretty cheap, um, and you can use a breadboard for this. You don't have to, you can make the connection straight to the Raspberry Pi Pico, but I'm just using a breadboard for the sake of organization for this video. And I, as you can also see, I have my Raspberry Pi plugged in to the power source, which is my computer right now. And I just have my four pins set up like this. So I have two on the top left here on, on pins one and two. And these are for the interfacing with the signals from the MPU650. And on the other side, I have red, which is the power. And then I have uh, black, which is ground. And these are for, of course, uh, uh, handling the power for the MPU650. So it's pretty straightforward. But just to note here, I'm not using the top rightmost pin there. So I'm actually using pin 39 for the red pin, and pin 38. So don't get confused, it's not the top right most pin where I started uh, these two uh, jumper wires. It's uh, the second to top right most. So I start the red one here, which is pin 39, and then pin 38. And, and I'll link a schematic of uh, how the pins are organized in the Raspberry Pi Pico in the description below, so if you're still confused about that. And correspondingly on the MPU650, as you could see here, um, we have the red connecting to v VOC or VCC. As you could see there, we have black connected to ground, and we have the other two uh, signal processor jumper wires connected to SDA and SCL. So white is connected to SDA, and then yellow is connected to SCL. And if everything's set up properly, you should see that red uh, power sign on the MPU650 showing everything is working. And then that being said, I hope it's clear there. Let's jump straight to the code. All right, so in order to uh, start interfacing with your MPU650 now that it's physically connected, you just wanna have Thani set up and you wanna have your Raspberry Pi Pico connected. As you can see here, mine is connected. I just connected it via USB or micro USB to my Mac. And you'll know it's connected. If you see this on the bottom left, you'll have the files for your Raspberry Pi Pico there. And I just have two files here that you need and um, or that I used to um, do this whole uh, interaction with the MPU650. So I have this library code, which I found online. As you can see, it's copyrighted by Sebastian Plummer. It's, it's very popular online to interface with the MPU650. We're not gonna go into the scope of this because it's, uh, it's beyond the scope of this video. But the main thing you wanna focus on is this main file I have here. Uh, you can ignore these two lines here. I just have this code here to show that my, my Raspberry Pi Pico is turned on. Uh, this is just turning the LED on. As you guys saw previously, my LED was automatically on. Uh, this was thanks to this line of code in my main file. Uh, other than that, we just import IMU from the IMU.py file. As you could see, I have IMU on my Raspberry Pi Pico. And I have other imports here. I have time, uh, I import sleep, and from machine, I import pin. And the reason I import that is so I can know the corresponding SDA and SCL pins on my Raspberry Pi uh, Pico W interface with the MPU650. So as you guys saw before, we had the, the white and yellow corresponding to SDA and SCL res respectively. And then we have this IMU object, which is uh, created with the IMU library here. And uh, once that's done and you have all the pins set up and everything's good, you should be able to run this while loop here, which just prints out all the values. And I'm just rounding here the values and I'm printing them out in a nice format and I'm generating new values every 0.2 seconds. So if you decrease this, it'll, it'll. so if I make it 0.1 seconds, it'll show me uh, values more frequently. If I make it one second, it'll show me the updates and acceleration more frequently. So as you can see here, I have acceleration AX, AY, AZ, and I have the, the angular acceleration GX, GY, GZ. And interestingly, the MPU650 also has a temperature sensor. It's not that accurate, but you can still get temperature readings from it to some degree of accuracy. And that's pretty much it, guys. And for those of you guys who um, didn't see the library code or the or don't want to copy all this code, I'm going to have it linked in the description below. Uh, this you can find online, but I'll still link it in the description on my uh, GitHub page. And I'm just going to go ahead and run this and show you that it works. So let's go ahead and run it. And as you can see, it's printing out values here on the bottom. And I'm just going to move my MP650. You guys can't see it, but I'm moving it now. And the more I move it, the more you see the values change. Um, the temperature is fairly consistent. It's, a, it's around, I think, 23.5 degrees Celsius. So if you did everything from the beginning to the end and you have MicroPython installed and you have all your hardware set up, this should work. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know if you like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned to this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys.